The sun has set on New Phyrexia. The machines have marched on the multiverse, and the unified planes rallied in defiance against them. The story may have ended, but even as the curtain closes, there's a crack. A mere glimmer of prospective storytelling left on New Phyrexia. Even without Elish Norn, without the Praetors, even without being part of our multiverse's reality, can there be a future for New New Phyrexia? Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sub, and bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, I want to bring you a little speculation I've been cooking up since the end of the long New Phyrexia story arc. Just because the story is over doesn't mean there isn't something that could come in the future. Just like Bolas remains in prison in the Meditation Realm and Emrakul imprisoned in Innistrad's Moon, the Phyrexians still exist, and so long as they exist, they pose a threat to the multiverse. In this video, I want to discuss the ending of the March of the Machines story. So, spoiler warning, and if you haven't seen it yet, you can find my complete playlist covering that story on your screen right now or linked in the description below. In addition to that, I want to give my speculation on how New Phyrexia could rise from the ashes as a continued threat in the story of Magic the Gathering. The Phyrexians have seen that the fabric of our multiverse has changed forever, but there's one thing that remains the same, and that's that today's video sponsor NordVPN is your best bet when it comes to protecting your online data, which you can start today by checking out my link with NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash etherhub. Fellow Planeswalkers, aren't you tired of regionally restricted content? Let's say you're oh, doing research on some ancient lore relating to a card game. Perhaps it requires sources from another plane, or country. Well, using NordVPN, you can change the IP address of your devices to match those of any source, even those locked with pesky regional restrictions. This feature has been invaluable to me and my work on this very channel. Elish Norn's been wanting to get her metal claws around me for years, but she can't find me thanks to NordVPN. NordVPN's leading cybersecurity features has helped me evade the Phyrexians' most dreaded tactics, such as malware and phishing attacks, all of which would leave me or you vulnerable to completion. Or hacking your private data, whichever you care about more. So you can now start safely traveling the endless plains of the internet by checking out nordvpn.com slash etherhub. With NordVPN, I now will be safe when searching online. Whenever someone unsavory tracks my IP, I can always switch it up. Oh, you think I'm on Innistrad? Let me just change it real quick and now I'm on Dominaria. It's like being a digital planeswalker. It can also be used on real places too, but that's not as fun to say. Try this risk-free VPN. Check out NordVPN using my link, nordvpn.com slash etherhub, which will provide you a great discount with your purchase of a two-year plan and get this four free additional months. Planes walk safely through the internet with NordVPN. As March of the Machine ended, we witnessed how the Dryad Planeswalker, Ren, fused with the living essence of the Phyrexian invasion tree, Realmbreaker. With Realmbreaker as her eighth companion, Ren was able to pilot its many interplanar branches to find Zolfir, which was lost in a pocket of time and space. It was the one plane Elish Norn couldn't find because the Phyrexians had no knowledge of its existence. Even Realmbreaker stated that it couldn't go to these unknown worlds. It could only go to the worlds that it was shown, which is a line that also indicates there's other worlds out there who have never faced a Phyrexian invasion. As Ren finds this tangle in time, she punches through a portal and gets Teferi to join the fight on New Phyrexia. Only Ren knows that this single mage, despite his power and heroism, wouldn't be enough to turn the tide. They needed the entire Zolfiran army, an army that has been preparing for war with Phyrexia for hundreds of years. When Tefiri phased them out of time, it was just before the very first Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria. They had prepared for conflict, but that conflict never came, as Tefiri looked to shield his people. While trapped in time, time itself was extended. They waited and prepared, but time never moved forward. Now they were a fighting force unlike the multiverse had ever seen. Hundreds of years of preparations for this enemy contained in just a moment of time. In order to do this though, Ren would have to push herself and Realmbreaker past their physical limits. The portal expands as Ren closes off those to other planes the Phyrexians were attacking. 
With her final spark of life, before the tree's soul is extinguished, she swaps the branches of New Phyrexia and Zulfir, effectively reversing their locations in the multiverse. Zulfir materializes in New Phyrexia, joining our timeline under the old Sons of Mirrodin, and New Phyrexia is plopped into a self-contained reality removed from our space and time. Thus, in one action, Zulfir is restored to the multiverse and New Phyrexia taken care of. Later we discover that the remaining New Phyrexians on other planes, remnants of their invasions and the completed inhabitants of worlds, were left in a sort of stasis, unconscious and inert. The oil sent the Phyrexians commands, much like a queen sending the hive instructions. It had lost its ability to signal the others as it was no longer part of this reality. With no signal, the Phyrexians become nothing more than curiosities on the planes they sought to unify. Thus, the March of the Machine was ended. Rather than looking at the consequences these events had and will have on the greater multiverse, let's look more insular at the consequences for New Phyrexia itself. With its place in the multiverse being swapped with Zulfir, we have to now assume the conditions Zulfir had previously been under are now effective for New Phyrexia. New Phyrexia had been phased out of time and reality. Like Zulfir, this means New Phyrexia is stuck as a moment of time, but that doesn't mean they're frozen within that moment. We saw as Tefiri traveled to Zulfir for the first time since its phasing that life continued on. It was just extended. For Tefiri, he had been gone for hundreds of years, but to the people of Zulfir, it felt like mere days. Now, what we should clarify is whether or not this means time effectively was stopped on Zulfir. I feel like there's conflicting accounts here. The way it's described in reference to Tefiri's time away, it seems like, yes, time was stopped for the Zulfirans. But if that was the case, would Tefiri go there and find people frozen in place? Or at least moving at a greatly reduced speed? And again, they said the Zulfiran army had been preparing for a war against Phyrexia this entire time. Can that be possible with them moving so slow in time? There were also a few lines about the Zulfiran people talking about their day-to-day -day lives that added to me thinking that, no, time moved forward but just in a different way. It's more like they had endless time rather than time that was stopped, slowed down, or sped up. So let's assume now New Phyrexia is trapped in this time bubble where essentially they're allotted endless time. The Phyrexians there remain in contact with the oil, the soul of New Phyrexia. So they're moving around and acted upon its will and that will, its primary directive, is to spread. That won't stop. And now they have all the time in the multiverse to try again to continue and grow and learn and eventually spread once more. The old Praetors are gone. There's space for new beings to evolve without the faults of the Praetors who came before them. And yes, the Praetors of New Phyrexia were flawed. In fact, they were flawed copies of Phyrexians. They were made partially of fleshlings that existed on Mirrodin before them. Thus, the mana that comprised their being impacted their personalities. Warrenclax cared only for strength, Jingitaxius was all about progression of knowledge, Shieldred was consumed by ambition and greed, Urabrask craved creativity and individualism, and while Elish Norn thought that she served as Phyrexia's will, she too personally wanted to be seen as a god and worshipped. She wanted to rule. Each of these traits meant they were a far cry from original Phyrexians, who were simply a hive that acted out the will of Yagmoth, or in future cases, the oil. Now, there was a lot of talk about Elish Norn had somehow co-opted the oil signal so that only she could command the Phyrexian forces. This would be strange that one being could essentially overwrite what is the natural state of Phyrexia. All of this was kind of just like guessed about by Saheeli Ray, so I wouldn't put too much stock in it unless this is all they're gonna give to us evidence-wise, just Saheeli Ray's theory. But to me, the natural state of Phyrexia is this all-encompassing desire to spread, and that requires the unification of all. While Elish Norn did a good job mimicking this, I don't feel like there's a real way for her to effectively co-op the entire Phyrexian race, which means the oil is the true catalyst for Phyrexians rising again, not some leader, and thus killing Elish Norn didn't really solve anything in that arena. Now that New Phyrexia is locked away, little to no organic material exists for them to meld with. Old Mirrodin was nearly completely Phyrexianized by this point. All the Mirrans there were either killed or retreated to Zulfir during the swap. 
That means what flesh remains on New Phyrexia had already been repurposed by Phyrexia. So at best, it's about a quarter as fleshy as the world the Praetors grew into, meaning there will be a much more singular focus to the next line of leaders on New Phyrexia. And gone are those pesky personalities, making them much more dangerous. Even if new leaders rise and evolve, it shouldn't matter, right? They're locked away from the multiverse. But are they though? Ren and Realmbreaker, even though they're just corpses at this point, are still on New Phyrexia. They've already established that the invasion tree can break through this pocket dimension, so it stands that it can also break its way out and back into the mainline multiverse. Now, as I was reading March of the Machine's story, especially as Ren was starting to graft to Realmbreaker, there was this deep imagery painted of the invasion tree almost being lost, that Phyrexia almost claimed it, and that the completed tree would reject Ren. Does this mean the invasion tree needs a soul to operate? If the soul is corrupted by New Phyrexia, excluding the cases with planeswalkers? Doesn't that just kill the individual? And that's what completes them? Killing the soul and replacing it with the one? So if the soul was lost, Realmbreaker would have been dead but still under its Phyrexian host's influence, which as of right now can still happen. The tree and Ren are both dead, but that doesn't mean New Phyrexia still couldn't repurpose them. In fact, that's their whole thing. They take parts and make something new. Just look at what they did to Venzer. He died, but they reanimated him all the same. Ren wouldn't be a planeswalker anymore, true, but she could still pilot a totally completed Realm Breaker to the multiverse. They just have to figure out how to activate it once the tree's corpse is brought back. But I in no way doubt the Phyrexians have this capability. The only point of contention here that I see is how effectively can Phyrexians raise the dead? Typically, I would say they have no problem whatsoever. Meat for the machine god and all that. You don't need a soul to be completed, at least that wasn't the case in the past. But we are given new information with Elish Norn's invasion into Innistrad. Namely corpses that had been reanimated through dark magic or even scabs created in a lab. They were immune to completion. They don't go into detail here, but those corpses didn't get turned when covered in Phyrexian oil. I think this may be an Innistradian based issue only though, as the magic of that plane really has an impact on the raised dead there. Maybe this magic supersedes Phyrexian oil. Either way, it's something to think about when discussing New Phyrexia reviving Ren and the invasion tree. But like I said, this may be a problem contained only to Innistrad. In conclusion guys, the way I see it, the victory we achieved in March of the Machine is not a total victory. With New Phyrexia now stuck in a time bubble, as Zulfir once was, they have limitless time to evolve and adapt, and still have access to the bodies of Ren and the Invasion Tree. I just don't see how they can't find a way back into the greater multiverse. Now I will say, as speculations go, this won't be something that happens anytime soon. Remember, Tefiri spent hundreds of years outside of Zulfir, but to them, only a few days had passed. In reality, the two timelines just don't sync up. So this means that even with New Phyrexia's hyper-accelerated growth, that it could be hundreds of years before they can break free. That doesn't mean the threat is gone for good though, like people think. It just means it'll be some time before we see Phyrexia again. And what will happen on that day? When a new, more unified Phyrexia reappears on the rotten branches of the revived and repurposed world tree? Well, that signal the completed peoples of the multiverse are lying in wait for returns with them. The invasion will continue without missing a beat, with agents already on countless planes ready to resume their glorious purpose. All in the name of new, new Phyrexia. Well guys, that's it for this video and my somewhat hinged and evidence-based speculation into the future of New Phyrexians in Magic the Gathering. This is where I would like to invite you in the comments below to share your own speculations on what happens now with this threat post March in the Machine. I want to know what you guys think, so leave me a comment. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting the Ether Hub by leaving it a like, becoming a subscriber or a member, dropping a super thanks, and sharing it with friends. It goes a long way in helping us build this community. And until next time, guys, see ya!